Welcome to the Life Hacks Show. Life Hacks gives you proof hacks and tips for the best version of yourself. And here is your crash test dummy for a better life, Marcus Moira. Yo peeps, welcome to a new episode of the Life Hacks Show from the DNX Camp on Lemnos, and I'm here with my Dear friends, Diego and Sean, who are like really the cryptocurrency masters of the universe. You were talking so much about this stuff and I think inspired a lot of people. At least uh, finally, um, when you gave the workshop yesterday on this camp about Bitcoin, Ethereum and everything what's all around this new cryptocurrency world. So thank you for, um, yeah, thank you for your time and thank you for hopefully sharing all your knowledge on this podcast episode. Thanks for being here. Thanks yeah, for us absolutely. Here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're super excited about this kind of uh, movement that we're going through right now in the cryptocurrency world. And we're, we're very excited and happy to try to bring the knowledge that we've learned from uh, the months and years that we've spent here to uh, complete beginners and the, uh, who might not be as well acquainted with what Bitcoin and Ethereum are and how to invest and these kinds of things that just seem super nerdy and techy and not really accessible to the common person. Uh huh. That's a great approach, especially for the beginners to break it down into some language that everybody could understand. So you were talking about um, you were into this cryptocurrency world already for a long time. When did it trigger you, or when did you have the first touch points with um, Bitcoin? Oh, for me, I am actually. I, I always like to say I'm probably one of like the rare cases that like I've. I have not made fortunes in Bitcoin because I've been watching the market for ages, just super mm. interested and like was really like uh, a bit timid to step in like during these points over the last few years. I my history following Bitcoin goes back to 2012 when it kind of started to oh, like, take early. off initially. Uh -huh. And I remember watching it as it was going up towards one hundred dollars and thinking, oh, you know, like Bitcoin, it's uh, it'll get like past 100 and it'll go down a bit and I'll wait till one of those dips when it gets back to like $50 or $20 or something. Yeah. And then the rest is history. It took off to it's 1200 <laughs> and it's never gone back to those levels again. So have you been on some crazy underground forums or where did you hear the, for the very first time about Bitcoin, this new cryptocurrency? I heard about Bitcoin from other developer friends, like being a developer myself, I've kind of always been in touch with these communities of people working on uh, new kind of cutting edge, exciting projects. And cryptocurrency was one of those that really just kind of started to come out as a popular topic of conversation and small investment for people in the web development world in about this time, 2012, 2013. I think Diego can speak a bit more to yeah. his experience there. Well, my experience comes from 2009, actually, wow. when uh, the paper was released by Satoshi. I saw it on Hacker News, uh, which right. is uh, the, um, the news aggregator from Y Combinator, which is one of the most popular incubators in the world. I follow it since 2007, and I was, I've been reading news from Silicon Valley back then. And um, it was introduced by, by a friend of mine that is from Stanford, and uh, yeah, once I, I was reading uh, the news and I suddenly saw something about uh, digital currency and I was like, okay, this looks interesting. I, I saw the white paper actually, but there was nothing. Then a few months later, they released uh, the software, uh -huh. right? open source. And I was a bit uh, doubting that this would work actually. I don't know myself the software, but it was no one was really using it back then and i even had the opportunity to mine but i didn't really believe in the idea to be honest <laughs> but you have the device at least right the the mining device you were like this oh, usb no. stuff or is it something different yeah no but that, that came afterwards ah, okay. no, i mean uh, i'm talking about the very beginning yeah. when you could use like the computer in order to mine so mm. everybody, a anyone could mine. I mean, private. It was just MacBook that I, I really didn't believe the trend at the very beginning. I think as most people, even now, you find mm. people that don't really believe in the trend. Yeah. And uh, well, time passed. Time passed. Time passed, and Bitcoin started to become more popular. Right. I was still like reading and knowing more about Bitcoin, and uh, in two thousand twelve. I started to hear even more about it, especially working uh, as a developer. I was working for a client and the price started to go up. And uh, 
I remember that at the end of 2012, uh, the beginning of 2013, I started to talk with uh, this client and, and ask him, hey, do you know about Bitcoin? Do you see the price starting to skyrocket right throughout the years? And uh, he was like, no, but Bitcoin, I don't really believe in this stuff, right? And some time afterwards, he told me, hey, did you buy Bitcoin? This is crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, man. <laughs> I asked you before. <laughs> I told you. But to, um, to be honest, I was still on, on the track. And uh, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2013. Um, a bit late, I would say, still, but still relatively early. How much was it then? Uh, I was uh, I bought it around five hundred dollars, something right. like that, and I exit half of it at around two thousand. Uh, sorry, one thousand two hundred. So I well, sorry, one thousand one hundred, which I made basically just recovered investment, and I keep the half of the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the price crash after empty Gox and what was empty Gox? It was an exchange uh, that basically stole the money from all the mm. um, all the people that uh, had uh, was the a funds pl there. A platform, right? Yes, where people could buy exchange. and sell. It was an exchange. And this is part of why we like to warn people, especially <laughs> beginners uh, into the cryptocurrency investing world, that you, you, you need to know what an exchange is when you go and you're making purchases there and you're looking at storage options after you already have your coins. Because on a on an exchange there's nothing you can do if an exchange decides to to liquidate all your coins or, or gox you money. actually yeah. nowadays yeah. you call gox you if you don't want to be gox you, you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well also the the dark dark net was very popular back then right so yeah. the, uh, it was it was a topic uh, back then and actually I, I, when I was discussing with my uh, my client back then about uh, cryptocurrencies uh one of the most popular uh, dark net markets was close as well, which was uh, Silk Road. Uh, Silk Road was basically Silk a place, Road, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, yeah. it was a place where where you can buy uh, like drugs and very bad things, right? I, Weapons, yeah. I mean, assassination contracts, even super more. super bad. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> I never I never visit the site, but um, you can still, if you Google images, you can see how how it was, right? In, uh, but it was only accessible on the darknet, which means you no. have to use Tor or something? No, no, no it was, was just a dot .com. So <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. It was just oh, wow. very crazy. The only no. thing is that the, everything was done anonymously, yeah. or uh, so the people thought. Uh, but uh, the FBI basically caught the, the author, okay. and he was charged. He's, he's in jail, basically. And, uh, mm. um, yeah, it's, um, it's a very complicated beginning for, for Bitcoin, uh, because it was very much associated to uh, drugs and uh, mm. money laundering and bad things and hack uh, funds, robbery, which is not really nice, of course, uh, mm -hmm. but that was the, the only use case that it could have back then because no one yeah. was really using for for real transactions. Actually, except for for some buying some pizzas, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of, the, one of our favorite stories to tell people is always the... Uh, the story of Bitcoin Pizza Day, which was uh, on May 22nd a few years back. Was it 2011? Diego can look this up real quick while we're telling the story. <laughs> yeah. But it, essentially, the first known purchase ever really made with Bitcoin was someone on the forum decided that he, uh, he had all these Bitcoin and everyone was talking about different use cases for it, what it could be used to purchase. And he was really hungry. So he decided to put out this like notice that Anyone who would send him uh, two pizzas to his address, he would give 10,000 Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And those 10,000 Bitcoins at today's valuation, since one Bitcoin is about $2,500, would be $25 million. Yeah. Oh, this was shit. back in 2010, actually. Uh, so he was a miner, or how did he have his Bitcoins initially? Yeah, probably. Presumably, yeah, yeah. that was the I way mean, you got the Bitcoins way, back right? then. Yeah. Back in these times. So one takeaway was, like you were mentioning, when you buy or sell Bitcoins on these exchanges, mm -hmm. is it something like a marketplace? Yeah, exactly. Like The way most of the exchanges work is they're, they're looking for people that are trying to sell yeah. their Bitcoin or their Ethereum or whatever the coin is. And looking at people who are trying to buy that same coin and they try to, it's like a stock exchange. They try to match buy orders and sell orders oh, okay. and pair them. And so it just it exchanges from one person's account to another 
uh-huh. within the exchange. All right. And one big takeaway for the people is to um, always remove or move the bitcoins once you purchase some on one of these exchanges to to a local or another wallet you possess. Yeah, exactly. Own, right? This is a great rule of thumb. Is like any time that you're not looking to exchange something that you've bought in the near future, if you're not looking, if you just bought Bitcoin and you know you're not going to sell and you're just going to hold it for weeks or months or years, the best thing to do is to move it into a wallet, which is an account that you own uh, to store that Bitcoin, basically, that is away from the exchanges. And you actually own this account and you're the only one that has the the password, which is the it's called the private key. You're the only one who owns this private key. Uh-huh. So you're the only one who has access to these Bitcoins or Ethereum or whatever. But if you leave them on the exchanges, you actually don't own the wallets that they're putting them in, the accounts they're putting them in. They're just kind of giving you credit for it and saying, we owe you this uh, amount of Bitcoin. So uh, until you take it away from the just exchange... just looks like you own it in the front end, but in the back end, it's still on their accounts. Yeah, exactly. Account. Think about how a, a bank works, right? Like online, you can go to your, like the page in the bank and it says you have $10,000 in your bank account. But there's not actually $10,000 in cash sitting somewhere. The bank's just telling you that they owe you $10,000 and you can withdraw whenever you want. Mm. Same with an exchange for Bitcoin or Ethereum. You uh, Got it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to withdraw this money into your own wallet, which is stored you know, outside yeah. of the exchange for it to actually be liquidated in a way. Uh-huh. And you were just talking about um, holding your Bitcoin for a longer time, like years. Is this the way most of the people approach the topic cryptocurrencies at the moment? Yeah, for people who are looking to invest long term, and this is something that we recommend to 99% of people trying to get into the game now, unless you're going to really dedicate the time to learning how to be a trader as opposed to an investor and you're looking at charts on a daily or weekly basis, it doesn't make sense to uh, to do anything other than making like buying in at like a, a good time, an opportune time, or mm-hmm. with a, a good strategy for creating a um, creating a nice like position for yourself to enter the market. Um, um, yeah. um, talking about entering the market, um, what would you recommend to people? Is the best time to enter the market? Should they wait for a drop or something? If, if they are now really convinced and, and they read a lot about Bitcoin and inform themselves and say, okay, I'm, I'm into this game now. I know it's a high risk investment, uh, but I have this money left. And if I lose the money, it's okay for me. So they, they want to enter the market. What would you recommend well, to these people? Well, yeah, I mean, it depends mostly on the, the, the risk level that people want to take. Um, mm-hmm. We personally don't give a dice on, on, invest, on investing. Uh, we just uh, believe that the technology is going to be adopted, adopted even more over the years. Uh-huh. And we are on this uh, basically for long term. Mm. We, don't, we don't really trade that much. Uh, many people are just waiting for short term profits. Uh-huh. So they just put some money and yeah. they think that they can make uh, 10 times Happens sometimes, but it also happens that you lose 80% of, mm. of your your investment very easily, right? Because it's very volatile. This is a very new low, uh, market capitalizations are extremely low. So anyone with a anyone that has a lot of money or a lot of coins mm. can manipulate very easily the markets, and that that is what's causing the, the volatility. Also, this is all like an experiment at the end, right? And uh, It's like the beginning of the internet. Uh, mm, it back can, then, yeah. back then, right? So we, some people say that we are in a huge bubble, but it might be possible. Uh, but on the other hand, if you consider that uh, the adoption has not even reached the normal user, then we still have a long, long, long path to to go. And this is why, like both Diego and I, like we're really excited about long-term investing in these things is because we're, we're not looking at the day to day or month to month trends. Even we're looking at the potential of investing in, like, if you look by analogy, investing when the internet was being made in the 1970s, if you could invest directly into the fuel of what powers the internet back then, think about what an amazing investment that would be looked at today. And Mm -hmm. we kind of view it in the same ways, like the technologies behind these kinds of uh, cryptocurrencies and crypto technologies is just 
It's super exciting.、Uh, we feel like it has a tremendous potential for changing the way the internet works at a very fundamental level. And that's why we're holding our、uh, cryptocurrency for long term investments.、Mm-hmm. Okay, and whenever you have some, some fiat money, which is the old currencies, US dollars or euro or whatever,、um, and want to invest in Bitcoin, do you still wait for a drop like you did、uh, yeah, <laughs> some、true. years ago? Or is, are you so convinced now? It's just your personal opinion.、Mm. Eh? It's, I think it's very important to stress what Diego just said. There's no recommendation at all here on this、uh, episode. Yeah. yeah, and this is absolutely recommend. just... No, this is not like advice or recommendations. This is just like if we talk about our personal strategy, it's just what we do personally. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes what we do personally is a little bit different from what we recommend to new kind of entrants into the field as well. Okay.、Um, so, yeah, like a couple days ago, we were at、uh, DNX camp here. We experienced a, a drop or like a correction, in the, they say, in the terms of the, of the market for、uh, Ethereum and to a lesser extent Bitcoin. And so, Understanding that we were looking at this、uh, drop that was happening in price of Ethereum, both Diego and I were trying to time more or less and see if we could find somewhere near the bottom of the fall before the value of Ethereum started going back up. We're comfortable doing that because we've been, we're used to the market a little bit right now. Whereas, like a new investor into Bitcoin or Ethereum, when they see the price start dropping, The initial reaction is just to panic and you、like、freak out and you panic sell. And so, for new investors, we actually we recommend that people try to do something like stepping in to a position.、Mm-hmm. Exactly.、Uh, also called dollar cost、uh, averaging, which is basically if you have a certain amount of money in mind that you want to invest into cryptocurrency, you let's use, say 500 bucks. 500、yeah. bucks, you just, just don't go and put. The 500 immediately. Maybe you put a little bit just to get a taste in the market, and then you, you, you create a plan in which you regularly invest.、Uh, later, if you understand better the market, you can decide when you get in, when you get out, right? And, and it's the same strategy if you want to cash out.、Mm-hmm. Um, the reason of why、uh, we believe in this is、uh, because we have uh, experiences uh, in which、uh, taking radical positions,、uh, either buying or selling, Uh, can result in、uh, bad investments.、Uh, last year, for example, I was in a cryptocurrency meetup in Berlin and I was advised to, to check out、uh, a coin that was called、uh, Dash. Dash.、Right? <laughs> Back then, no one was talking so much about Ethereum and crypto,、uh, sorry, and smart contracts,、uh, but、um, they were talking more about、uh, altcoins, which is basically. Competitors of Bitcoin,、right? mm-hmm. uh, means of storing value, right? And one of them was called Dash, as, as one, one of the guys told me there.、Uh, it was a very interesting project,、uh, which is uh, uh, basically uh, an anonymous coin.、Um, at the beginning, it was called Dash Dark Coin, so it was not really like the most humble beginnings, let's say.、Um, And、uh, they renamed it later for Dash. I just put some, some、uh, Bitcoins in it just to, to, for, for means of investment to, to check it out. So you have to buy the other currencies with Bitcoins, right? Yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah, basically. If they're small. Exactly. Most of the coins that are out there、uh, currently, but to, to come,、uh, yeah. sorry, you, you, you need to access it using、uh, Bitcoin. But just to finish the, the story, I bought some, some Dash for, for investment, right? And the price went down a lot. Like, I think I remember I bought it around seven or something that went down to four. I, I don't know, I panicked, right? I was not really trading that much.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I sold almost all the Dash that I had, and I lost、uh, no, not that much money, but I lost the position, right? Uh, and nowadays, the, the price goes to 150. I think recently it was、oh. 200. So、mm. you can imagine that. That's a lot. So you lost your, some of your investment and you also missed the big、exactly. leverage. But that's why I decided to, to. Now my strategy is more like if I decide to buy, I go slowly, right? And if I decide to sell, I do the same, right? Slowly. I don't take like radical positions.、Uh-huh. Uh, never 100%. I mean, the, maybe the maximum amount that I'm willing to, to, to sell or buy is 50% of either fiat or,、um, or coins.、Um, and that strategy has worked way better. 
for me. But the best strategy by far has been just holding because the market's just going up, up, up. Mm. And yeah, it can be either a bubble, uh, we don't know, or it can be uh, uh, that the, the, the market's realizing the potential of cryptocurrencies, right? Mm -hmm. And the strategy is also the strategy I think Warren Buffett is following, and it's called buy and hold. Exactly. Right. And mm -hmm. just look long term. And that's what, what at least I'm, I'm doing. It. And another thing that helps a lot uh, is to have the mindset that whatever money you put here is basically money that you lost. And I did that since the beginning. I was like, okay, this money I just burn because it's new stuff that can fail, right? Yeah. Bugs can get introduced to the code. Hacks can occur. Many things can go wrong in this, in this experiment. But also many things can go well huh? exactly. <laughs> so, to just stress all the downsides and risks exactly. I think there's a huge huge potential and the deeper I dig into the topic the more I am convinced and I'm still so so grateful that you gave already the workshop one year ago yeah <laughs> exactly on this DMX camp in 2016 which uh, finally convinced me to to really get started like you guys I was also observing the topic and was once in a while popping up popping down popping up I forgot I wanted to set up my wallet and then when we said sit down both uh, together and you showed me how to set up my wallet yeah, yeah I, I was um, last like, year, brave enough to last year I was not really that uh, secure still about uh about all the cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, when we were in the last camp, actually, uh, I experienced the, the Ethereum uh, DAO hack. Yeah. The decentralized autonomous organization hack. A guy basically found a bug on a smart contract of Ethereum. So it was not, the, the hack was not on Ethereum itself, but on a, on a smart contract, using on a particular mm -hmm. smart contract, mm -hmm. but it was the like system. the star project of yeah. Ethereum, right? So uh, Ethereum okay. was pretty new, it was going up, and Right, the price crashed very badly because someone found a bug on the smart contract. Was I think it was he was stealing something like twenty thousand dollars per second. It was really really crazy hack that even triggered like a fork on the on the coin. Now we have two versions of Ethereum: the Ethereum, uh, the normal Ethereum, and the uh, Ethereum Classic. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, it, it made people realize more that things have to be thought more before mm -hmm. in terms of security before launching projects, but. Nowadays we have like all these DAO, uh, sorry, all these um, ICO projects being which, launched. Which means ICO? ICO is? means uh, initial coin offering. So in Ethereum works a bit different than than Bitcoin, right? Uh, for those who know, who don't know, um, Ethereum is more a com global computer that executes the so-called smart contracts, which is basically um, code that gets executed by the by the network in uh, to say in simple terms, is programmable money. Whenever you uh, receive money into a smart contract, you can uh, decide whatever you want to do with the, uh, the 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 money into a smart contract, and the network is going to take care of executing this based on certain conditions that you pre-program. Um, the the most used uh, case for the smart contracts is issuing shares of companies, uh -huh. right? That are called tokens. And these tokens are being issued uh, nowadays for any kind of idea. And some ideas are raising money, not even having a prototype, right? So <laughs> it's like in 1999. Exactly. That's yeah. why many people think we're on a, on a bubble, or a huge bubble right now, because it resembles a bit of what was the dot com. And mm -hmm. it's possible. It's mm -hmm. possible. I mean, yeah, but also on the other hand, um, also in the dot com bubble, there were some really successful exactly. uh, startups founded like Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon. Exactly. Absolutely. It's a bit different from what happened back then because a lot of the reason that a lot of these initial coin offerings or ICOs are really booming is because a lot of like the big Bitcoin millionaires or billionaires, especially in China, are looking for, they can't withdraw the money into fiat, into like actual currency. Ah because of the tax liability and this kind of stuff. So they're looking for why, an alternative. Why China? Oh, just because this is where a lot of them uh, exist. And it's just, been, it's just been shown that these are a lot of the people who are investing in okay. the ICO uh, type technologies. But it, it doesn't have to be China. It can yeah. be anywhere. It's just harder to withdraw money from the exchanges in China yeah. than it has been okay. over here, for example. Well, China is a big example uh, because actually uh, since the creation of Bitcoin, they have been mining a lot, a lot, a lot of... Bitcoin, they mm. have very professionally, right? They have yeah. like huge infrastructure for mining. 
So, so do you think they, they had a good gut feeling or they, they had an advantage of more information than others? Or for why? becoming miners? Or? Yeah, why did they went all well, the, they have ac the They're the hardware factor of the world. They have so. direct <laughs> access to the graphic cards, yeah. which are what you need essentially to uh, to mine Bitcoin and to mine different kinds of well, coins. Actually, for me, and mining means crea for, creating Bitcoins, right? Exactly. Yeah. Some But more operations. than video cards is ASICs, right? For, mm. uh, in the particular car, uh, case of Bitcoin, which is a specialized software that only works for mining uh, Bitcoin, which mm -hmm. is a certain kind of algorithm. Right. Uh -huh. But since all this is manufactured in China and every if everyone's wanting it all over the world, but the Chinese are where it's being invented in China, they're yeah. going to have the first line of uh, opportunity to buy. And you were talking about um, having problems to, to get the Bitcoin into fiat money. Mm -hmm. And you were just talking about a meetup in Berlin. I think there are some interesting also brick and mortar stores who already accept Bitcoins, right? Yeah, well, nowadays it's a bit complicated because um, Bitcoin faces some scalability issues that had led to having huge transaction fees, right? You you might uh, pay uh, two to five dollars a transaction mm. uh, because the the blocks in, in the blockchain of Bitcoin are totally full since many many uh, years already. Like the discussion, oh, actually, not not many years, but long time ago and the discussion has been for many years already mm -hmm. on how to scale Bitcoin, right? And um, right now the developers are trying to implement solutions to make the, the blocks um, of the blockchain uh, more efficient, but the miners don't want this because this might lead led to um, uh, lower fees and that will decrease the profits. Uh, do you think it's a weakness in the original concept? Um, Or didn't didn't he never like the one who created Bitcoin? There's never a lot of it. there's a lot of controversy to be honest. Like the the guys the miners have their own movement that's called Bitcoin Unlimited, right? Or uh -huh. emergent consensus. They they say, well, Satoshi said this, and the the, other, yeah. the developer, uh, the core developer said, oh, Satoshi this said this, and they read interpret this. right. So it's it's a bit complicated to say, but to be honest, the in my, in my opinion at least, the ones that are really adding value for free uh, to the network are the developers mm -hmm. so I mean the miners are just profiting about this of course uh, they are doing a very essential job in mining and keeping secure the blockchain uh -huh. but anyone can become a miner but not uh, not everyone wants to be a developer and maintain the stuff right mm. so, who are the developers uh, well right now if you go to uh, bitcoin dot uh, org Uh -huh. Not that com uh, that org. You can find uh, all the development team. That com is actually uh, owned by the, the the big mining groups, right? And uh, the ah. community is very divided at the moment about this mm. topic. And in the next month, things uh, well, maybe earlier. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Big things are gonna occur because there are some movements that want to just uh, split the network. Mm -hmm. um, Someone wants to ha hard fork it in order to implement this uh, new technology that is called SegWit. Mm -hmm. uh, some others want to increase the block size. In, instead of having one megabyte, having two megabytes. Some others want to make it flexible. It's a huge discussion. And this, is times, also, huh? this is also touching Ethereum, by the way. And it's uh -huh. a very big uh, mm -hmm. problem at the moment because imagine this, like Bitcoin works uh, on, based on a P2P network, right? The same as BitTorrent that you just share files, right? But yeah. in this case, you just share one big file, which is the, the blockchain. It's a public ledger, right, with all the transactions, and everyone connected to the Bitcoin network, uh, at least using the, the Reno software, the, the core software, uh, has a full copy of all the transactions that have happened. This is increasing a lot, right? I, I, I even lost the track at the moment. I, I would guess it's something like 150 gigabytes right now of information. Um, but this problem... It's a text file. It's not really a text file, it's a binary file that contains all the transactions, right? Mm -hmm. All the transactions mm -hmm. that have happened since the very beginning of the network. And this is a, a, like the, the, the big point of uh, cryptocurrencies, that if, if the whole network can have the, 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 the blockchain, then you cannot really mutate the, the contents, right? Because yeah. you need consensus in order to uh, agree on what happened inside of the network. Mm -hmm. But at, mm -hmm. at the same time, is the big weak, po weak point that they have. Because as this stuff grows, less and less people can store the the blockchain, right? And Ethereum right now is having the same problem. Actually, there was really? a discussion very recently in the same site that I told you news uh, that ycombinator.com 
uh, some guy were, was saying that the, 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 the blockchain in Ethereum is growing at a face of one gigabyte per day. <clears throat> mm, I haven't wow, verified the huge. info, but it's, it's huge, you know. Um, now, there's some other technologies that want to um, create... I, I, I read very recently about it, so I don't have all the information, but holo chains. They want to basically distribute the, the blockchain instead of everyone having the, the same copy, just distribute it. Mm. And there are some people working on other technologies, for example, Lightning Network, which is basically creating side chains and mm. you create transactions privately between parties, right? And then adding all this into the blockchain. So basically, we see it's are very exciting working. and very technical. Also, on the very yeah. Technical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the important thing about all these new technologies that are being developed is they're being developed as ways to keep the network of Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, as decentralized and spread out as much as possible. And so everyone can have a copy of these things on their yeah. computers if they wanted to. Yeah. And now this is a big risk when, when it's not decentralized anymore because only people with huge resources can store these huge files. It's Against yeah, the concept, the initial concept, right? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, one of the one of the points that people are really excited about about Bitcoin, Ethereum, different cryptocurrencies is decentralization. The uh, idea that you're not just beholden to one bank to tell you what everyone's account balance and transactions are, but you have everybody in this network having a copy of this kind of public ledger that can say, "Oh no, like look, this is actually like the amount that uh, that Marcus has in his account." But if these ledgers get so massive that people can't store them on their local computers, then only these big companies will be able to store them and then it will essentially become centralized again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe coming back to the beginning, why are you both so passionate and so convinced and, and so much into these cryptocurrency topic? So just for the people who are listening, mm. we're hanging together now since I think nearly 10 days and <laughs> every time 24-7 you're talking about these cryptocurrencies and you see your passion and I see into your eyes and they're just full of joy. Mm. Um, Yeah, um, pinging these ideas about cryptocurrencies. And well, for, me, for me, it's and basically that we, uh, at least this, the way I see it, is that we are experiencing, not only with Bitcoin and Ethereum, but with all the other projects that are appearing, we are seeing the beginning of a new internet, right? Mm -hmm. it, that's the way I see it, at least, right? Uh, some call it the Web 3.0, where everything is decentralized, yeah. where everyone has some sort of... Uh, ownership and participation in the internet in a level that goes beyond to the current web in which you have just a server that controls everything. Yeah. Now everyone can have a more active role, uh, not only acting as a client and grabbing information, yeah. but also sharing the information, right? And you're, you're seeing also with the, all this distributed economy based startups, Uh, such as Uber, Airbnb, right? So there's a trend that is going clearly towards this. And mm. money has not been upgraded in our system so far. Not and really. this is a, the chance that we have to, to change it. And the, the, there's a lot of problems with the, with the current monetary system, right? And uh, I think it's very exciting times. It's mm -hmm. still an experiment. It can fail for sure. Um, and that's the way uh, I see it. And that's why I invest on, it, on this. And I re research and I develop things about this. Mm. How do you see it, Sean? Oh, no, in a very similar way. Like, I completely agree with the Web uh, 3.0 type analogy. Like, the, the idea that we don't have, have to be, have millions of us trying to get in touch with Google servers, for example, to get information or to host things or to, you know, we're using Google to do our searches, to, like, do, use a cloud storage for our photos and everything. We're, we could just be sharing resources amongst everybody that's in this, like, giant network of people who are both receiving information or receiving services and giving services and giving information at the same time somehow a little bit like peer-to-peer <clears throat> -peer networks and napster work it's exactly a peer-to-peer -peer network and like mm -hmm. uh, napster and BitTorrent and popcorn time all work <clears throat> excuse me the central idea that as we well napster and BitTorrent and stuff the idea was with file sharing as you downloaded files from everybody in this network you then had the file on your computer and then you became one of the sharers of the files and it's Yeah, very similar. And it goes beyond money. It goes beyond um, these kind of ICOs like we're talking about. It's stuff like supercomputers, uh, being able to contribute storage, unused storage space on your own computer. Um, processing power. Processing power. 
uh, with like prediction markets, which is trying to help uh, evolve the way polls work. Even insurance, understanding events, decentralized insurances, right? So mm. betting on mm. on the blockchain, yeah, uh, means to ident- uh, keep track of identities and ownership, right? Yeah. So the blockchain is, is actually the the stuff that really is revolutionizing everything, right? Mm. So somehow giving giving the power back to the to the people to the to the community. Yes. Um, from yeah, and doing it like before these, centralized some somewhere. Yeah, and kind of reworking these processes that haven't really been reworked in several years in in a way that could completely revolutionize the way that the internet like works at this very very fundamental level, mm-hmm. which could open up new doors. And I think what makes us really excited about it is every you know every time we research a new coin that's coming out, we hear about a new ingenuitive technology that's like driving this coin and what it could potentially mean for the future it just makes us want to learn more and invest and like yeah. i said we're not investing in the numbers we're investing in the potential for these kind of ideas to be massive game changers for future technology uh-huh. are there great minds in the game now and all these creative entrepreneurs entering the market you mean that are creating coins oh no minds, um, minds. minds like um very smart people. Very yes. smart people yeah, and smart very, entrepreneurs. Very, very smart people. So I, mm. I mean, can you imagine creating, great times for creative, I mean, skilled entrepreneurs? To, to make a cryptocurrency, you have to think that you must uh, merge all, well, not no, but very, very complex technologies that have been developed over the, the last years, right? You have P2P networks on one side, you have uh, cryptography on the other one, mm-hmm. right? And you have the the blockchain as well. So if you merge this three stuff, uh, if you also merge distributed computers, you you have all this ecosystem creating new new things on top of very very brilliant technologies that have been created. Mm. And it's not really easy to 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 achieve even with huge teams uh, at the very beginning. For example, of Bitcoin. Um, you still had like vulnerabilities and people uh, made screw ups and uh, the mm-hmm. network was hacked, right? And Ethereum also happened with their smart contracts and it's gonna keep happening. Yeah. But people are working behind this are brilliant, right? And also startups that are appearing um, have very, very interesting idea. The problem is some might argue that they are receiving too much funding, right? Some others might argue that uh, some are not legit, but at the end of the day, the market is the one that is deciding. Yeah, and yeah. If mm-hmm. people are betting for Definitely. this, is for for a reason. So yeah, mm-hmm. like similar on the stock market, people just bet into the future of a company. Yeah, and no one knows if it happens or not, right? Exactly. exactly. And this also, I mean, I read a very interesting uh, thing uh, the other day that said that the forex market is something like five thousand percent more times. Uh, no, sorry, five thousand. How much is it? Five trillion. Dollars or five trillion dollars compared to two point how much was that? Sorry, I don't I really don't remember the numbers yeah, right now, but mm-hmm. it was, it Just was Google. It was very, very uh big the, the total amount of cash in circulation, you mean? Yeah the, in, in the forex market is mm. huge compared to cryptocurrencies. So this stuff has still a lot, a lot of room to grow. So mm-hmm. Yeah, and I attended your workshop yesterday and it was really, really great stuff I, I took away for me and also for, for people, especially for beginners who are just at the at the start mm. and trying to get into the system or, or into this cryptocurrency world and understanding more and more. And I think many people were inspired by you, especially in our group. Um, I've seen some people setting up their wallets and investing in the first coins. So, oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. So, thank you, yeah. thank you for yeah for being with us and inspiring all, all these people. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. By the way, about the the numbers I was saying yeah. here, I have it because I, I didn't really remember, but it was five trillion uh, dollars being traded uh, on average daily on forex. Daily, daily mm. on forex. This means like uh, foreign exchange. dollars, yeah. euros, John. Uh, and the banks earn lots of money with the with the hidden fees uh, because they have their own exchange rates, right? Exactly. But if you compare to Bitcoin, for example, or crypto in general, crypto has a five billion dollar trading uh, volume. Mm-hmm. Which it, just imagine the potential. <laughs> so yeah. one one thousandth of the the market, basically. Oh, yeah. Funny. So a lot of room to grow. So what I'm after is, um, do you plan to to consult um, even more? 
often beginners giving workshops or setting well, up a product or well, an online yeah. course? Let's talk about, so basically these leaders I get to, to, to coin coaching. We, we started this uh, project called coincoaching.com. Coin very coaching. recently. Uh, and by the way, all the links are, you can find in the show notes. I just take yep, all perfect. notes. <laughs> Thank you. For the listeners. Yeah. So um, I started to receive a lot of uh, questions from my friends saying, hey, how do I get into Bitcoin, right? And how do I do this and yeah. that? And what's the theory? You're also my man to go whenever I have a question. <laughs> yeah. And now I have two. <laughs> I, I ping you on Facebook. Mm. And uh, we did some other workshop. I did another workshop and I was like thinking, okay, that there's like actually a market for uh, teaching people uh, about how cryptocurrencies work. And I talked with Shana, and maybe we can do like a, uh, as an idea, right? Like mm -hmm. a way of coach um, the people. By yeah, the way, where, yeah. where did you both meet? You're both nomads, obviously, yeah. hanging out on the camp with us. You're from originally from? I'm originally from, from Chile. Nice. Uh, but I've been living in, I was living in Berlin for five years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and I'm, I'm from the US. So yeah, we actually just met on the, the nomad cruise, Great. which is, yeah, yeah. like a, a, maybe some of the listeners have heard of the nomad cruise, a trip for uh, about like 120 digital nomads for 15 days on the open ocean uh, several months ago. Yeah, I did the very first Nomad Cruise. Um, it was really exciting. It was really a new experience. And I think it in the show notes. It's from a good friend of us, from, mm. from Johannes, and he's doing a great job with the Nomad Cruise. Yeah, so yeah. actually, you met on the cruise. Yes. And then this is I, I gave a worship, basically, and we, we met uh, with uh, Sean and other people that were interested in crypto. We kept talking, right? And we had some synergies with, uh, with Sean. So I said, hey, man, why, why don't we set up like a... A guide, online guide to teach beginners how to get into cryptocurrencies. Uh -huh. And uh, now we are launching this new project that is called Coin Coaching, where, where beginners can know more about how cryptocurrencies work, what words to choose, how to properly secure your funds, how to diversify, etc. So mm -hmm. that's basically what we're trying to do here. Great. Is it an online course with videos or how is it planned? Yes, or is text based. It's uh, we we're trying to uh, create guides, and that was our original idea. But we received also a lot of feedback here on the on the DNX camp about how to to properly this do this, and we are mm -hmm. going to do some webinars as well, some seminar online uh, seminars, and uh, type them exactly, uh -huh. and afterwards maybe create some video records. So we are going to see. This is also an experiment. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but the main the main objective here is mm. try to teach people how this works because we see that there's actually a lot of people Huge asking demand. us yeah. how those things work. So. Yeah. So it's kind of like the material comes from the questions that we're asked all the time and the mistakes that we see all the time mm -hmm. um, because it's really it's 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 tough. Like the learning curve can be steep to get into cryptocurrency if you don't have somebody really kind of holding your hand and showing you, showing you the ropes. And also so, we, we hope to contribute to, to the cryptocurrency community and so more people get to in. To the micro system, micro economy of the zip cryptocurrency exactly. world, right? Exactly. Um, Because um, we really believe in this and we're this long term. But on the other side, we, we don't really aim to uh, push people and say, hey, join crypto. No, we, we rather want to keep it very free and say like, uh, you know, If you have questions, come to us and we can help you. But yeah. we don't want to say hey, yeah, yeah. pool or anything because there's people already trying to push too much into this. And always when, when something mm -hmm. is hyped or trendy, there are always these kind of people. But yeah, you see people doing crazy things like mortgaging their houses mm -hmm. and putting literally like 100% of what they have into crypto, which... Happens we would never before. recommend. Yeah. yeah, happens everywhere where money's involved, man. People exactly. Are, But the thing is, yeah. like... Even if you don't end up going into the crypto markets, like it's really interesting stuff. And like, I think just good to know about like the technologies that are going to completely revolutionize the way we interact, like on a day to day basis in the future. Um, so learning about these technologies, like we hope it shows why they're exciting and potentially good investment ideas for people, mm -hmm. but also just as kind of educational and showing kind of the way forward from here. Mm hmm. And we're not over, over promising also. That mm -hmm. is very important. That's, no. mm. I think that the best thing is always just to, to, to inspire people by being the example or like being someone they want to become or having the knowledge they want to have. And then people will approach you automatically. Not yeah. like 
being on a mission and then try to to persuade other people just like you you both have been here on our camp and just bringing these ideas about cryptocurrency and everybody gets more and more excited got more and more excited about this this topic huh mm. it's really summed up but also mm. for us it's overwhelming you know like there's so many things going on every day that's what i want to so, ask how <laughs> do you sort all these crazy it's, rumors it's stuff really, really news crazy and... to to keep uh, up to date uh, we have to read every day more and more and more and more because There's so many new projects. Uh, Are there trusted sources you believe more in than others, or who well, pick more to be honest, stuff, to be stuff? honest, I mean, it depends on what you mean with trusted. If, if it's for investment advice, I just take my own decisions and it's my own risk. Mm. So I, I just do my own research. For me, the the most important thing when I try to invest in crypto is checking the technological side of the projects. If the development team has smart people behind. That kind of uh, that is endorsing the project and contributing to it for me is a project that has a lot of potential, right? Mm. Because it, otherwise it's air. Mm. I I I I don't really like these projects that come out with not even with uh, an MVP, right? So I really try to to invest in things that have a foundation yeah. uh, from the technological point of view. Uh, also because I'm a developer myself, ah, right? right? So that's mm. uh, the the most important thing. Do you have something for the for the listeners of this podcast um, where they can get into this um, word, like um, a freebie or something? Yeah, well, we're um, we're giving away a um, we're giving away a, a PDF that we uh, just put together about the kind of like the biggest mistakes. It's called the the three mistakes that bankrupt beginner investors in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And this, like I, we were talking about before, this kind of comes from people asking us questions and also observing a lot of com common mistakes that newbie or new, uh, new investors make into this uh -huh. world. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, if the users want to go to coincoaching.com slash DNX, we'll point a link to the PDF for you guys. Perfect, perfect. I mean, we were newbies ourselves as well, so. Yeah, yeah we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. We made a lot of mistakes as well, so. <laughs> yeah. The, we keep doing mistakes, and uh, it's part of the process. It's part of the learning. game, right? So, This is how it goes. Yes. Yeah, and I'm really excited to, to see you both again on the DNX Lisbon, where you will give a workshop, right? Absolutely. Yes. We're very excited as well. Yeah. And also on the DNX, we, we try to foster, like, um, people to, to get into the topic, and um, just, I inserted... Or created a, a button Bitcoin accepted, and I think for the last event in Berlin, three people out of 900 paid their tickets with Bitcoin. So huh. it's a, it's great. a small start. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Hopefully, over the years, it's going to increase as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, guys, thanks for your time. Thanks for for um, sharing all your knowledge. Thanks, you absolutely. Marcus. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Marcus. This is fun. And see you in Lisbon. See you. See, see you. you. Yes, yes, yo, this was another episode of the Life Hacks show. If you love what you are listening to and can use some of the tools and hacks we are sharing on the Life Hacks show, I would be more than happy if you can give me a review or rating on iTunes. Follow me on facebook.com slash Moira Marcus and just ping me and give me some feedback that would mean the world to me. So long, have fun, peace and out. Peace and out.